What is going on today, guys? So we had a huge day. Veritone had a 46% day, insane day in the stock market. And quantum stocks also did really well. We also had Seal SQ report earnings. We're gonna go into all of that. We're gonna go into market news. We're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff. We're gonna do this in like 15 to 20 minutes is my goal. So before we get started, there were some comments last night about the hair. They said, I think, let me, let me see if I can remember that. That's the worst hair ever. And comb your hair before it goes bald. So I don't know if you guys have any recommendations for a curly hair product, but I kind of just, so today was a really exciting day and the stock market, I mean, look at that candle from Veritone, unbelievable candle from Veritone. And make sure you hit the like button if you want to stay informed and want to keep others informed. Let's jump right in. All right, so taking a look at the stock heat map today, we can see Nvidia had a decent day. Google continues its rally. Meta did well, and it looks like Palantir is actually having maybe some recovery as well. AMD down there has a little bit of recovery. The real story was the quantum watch list. So we didn't really have a huge move today in any of the major indices, but quantum had a big move. And I think they might be front running some announcements we got today from IonQ and D-Wave. Let's take a look and kind of see what's going on here. So we see that Rigetti had a 9% pop today. Unbelievable. Ion Q, 7%, QUBT, 6%. We haven't had a day like this in Quantum in quite some time. Even Seal SQ, who reported after the bell and sentiment has been pretty washed out, had a 6% day. QBTS had a 5% day. And some losers of the day were some Quantum cybersecurity stocks like Quantum Emotion and BTQ. Skywater had some pullback after a nice day yesterday. So the markets were mostly flat for the first half of the day and they rallied towards the end of the day. As you can see, the Russell itself was actually down, but the NASDAQ pushed up. And usually when the NASDAQ pushes up, a lot of the stocks we cover on this channel tend to benefit from that. We also saw that after hours today, Oracle reported earnings and their stock is up something like 20% after hours. Pretty amazing. The AI trade and the AI race is uh, absolutely still. So it looks like the demand for AI is not going anywhere anytime soon. Then we also saw that the Supreme Court is going to fast track the tariffs for Trump. And the Supreme Court said Tuesday it would quickly review a high stakes legal challenge to President Trump's tariffs. In an order released Tuesday, the high court put the case on a track for oral arguments in early November. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. At this point, it seems like the tariffs have been priced into the market anyway. And the doom and gloom scenario that we were talking about in March and April that everyone was fearful of that it was going to create the next recession, that doesn't seem to be happening at all. We're going to go into why we had some of this positive price action for the quantum stocks. And we can see that IonQ is planning to host an analyst day on September 12th, 2025. And the leader in quantum computing and networking today announced it will host its 2025 analyst day on Friday in New York City at the New York Stock Exchange. So this event will feature IonQ's executive leadership team, and they will offer a comprehensive overview of the company's strategy, milestones, and product roadmap. Attendees will also gain insights into IonQ's technological, operational, and financial progress. So the last time IonQ had an analyst day, it did create a lot of buzz, if I'm to understand correctly. And now they are having this analyst day again in New York City at the New York Stock Exchange. So maybe there's some exciting announcements coming for Quantum as soon as this week. And maybe the price action we're seeing is front running this Ion Q analyst day. Then also we saw from D-Wave that D-Wave is very busy. So they're going to be participating in a growing number of global events, including Semicon in Taiwan, 
Quantum World Congress, and this is all in the month of September, Quantum World Con Congress, and FinTech Nation 25. Murray Tom will be there. Andrew King will be at Quantum World Congress. He was the lead author on the Quantum Supremacy paper. And of course, also this month, D-Wave has Japan Qubits Conference. So a lot going on for D-Wave. And it just seems like they are on the verge of making some sort of announcement. We will have to see. All right, so we also had Seal SQ earnings today and they reported half one 2025 results and they provide an update for a revenue guidance from 17.5 to 20.0 million dollars. So raising their guidance, representing a 59% to 82% year on year growth, a strong balance sheet and strategic milestone. So I went in and highlighted a few of the important sections so they had cash reserves of $121 million up from 19 million. We've seen this at, in a lot of the quantum stocks that they've bolstered their cash position and cash reserves, which gives them more financial freedom and flexibility. They did accelerate their operating loss up from 8.9 million, largely driven by one-off stock-based compensation charge of 9.9 .9 million. So if you factor that in, it's not terrible. They did increase their guidance, representing between 59 and 82 percent growth year on year, and they expect a return to growth and demand for their current semiconductor products and the consolidated revenue of IC Alps since acquisition. So we haven't really seen from CLSQ the result of the IC Alps acquisition. We just know that it's finalized. They also have identified a new business pipeline of $170 million between 2026 and 2028 across these sectors, PQC, ACIC, and sovereign semiconductor markets. And 2026 catalysts include the IC Alps acquisition, semiconductor personalization, and test centers. So lots going on there. My read on this is let's wait for the earnings call tomorrow and let's hear what Carlos has to say. The earnings call will be tomorrow, I believe. Not exactly sure the exact time, but tomorrow Carlos will be speaking to investors. All right, the story of the day, in my opinion, was this Veritone candle. So if you all remember, longtime followers of the channel know that just about a month ago, we had the Veritone CEO on this channel and we asked them a bunch of questions and not softball questions either. I asked them, hey, the stock has been struggling for a while. What's going on? They give a lot of great answers and we know that they've had, uh, Ryan gave some awesome answers and we know they've had a decent earnings. So we got an article today from investing.com that D Borel Capital has raised its price target on Veritone from 20 to $26 from $6 on Tuesday. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at what I would call a God candle. And it's essentially a candle that is way that engulfs any candle in recent memory. If we go back year to date, there's no green candle that even comes close to that. There was one in late in late December that maybe came close, but a 46% move and with sustained volume and it's holding in the post market. So Veritone has made a real move here on this news. And if we look a little closer at the article, the stock is currently at the time of the art, uh, the time of the article, the stock was trading at 263 with a market cap of 145 million. So D. Borel Capital noted that Veritone's early proof of concepts include initiatives with U.S. Navy and law enforcement body cam programs, which validate the VDR engine's capabilities and demonstrates its readiness for broader market adoption. So on this channel, we asked Ryan Stilberg about law enforcement, camera data lakes, and he did talk to us about the VDR engine. So it's really crazy to see that come up in this analyst and that price target. They're reiterating the buy and raising that price target to 26. So Baritone has the potential to capture even a small portion of the target March market, which could translate to approximately $1 billion in revenue over the next decade. So very nice for Baritone. So what happened today for Baritone is it actually broke 
some key resistances. And in our Discord, we were pretty excited. We were talking about this as it was happening in real time. And uh, shout out to Doc Quantum. He was a good sport today. I was saying he was the resistance line here at 318. We did break through 318. And we also broke through 377. So where are these lines and why are they why do they matter? Well, prior to this, Veritone had rejected off of 318 four times. As you can see, it blasted through 318 and actually came up and looked above a recent resistance all the way back in February of 2025 when we saw this 377. So it's starting to look for even if we look to the left on Veritone, of course, there's a lot of ground that Veritone has left to cover, but we can see that this definitely looks like potentially the sign of a healthy reversal for Veritone. And you can see the vol volume is coming in. So the last time we saw price action like this for Veritone was a pump up to about $8 and then there was a sharp sell off down. Um, and if we look to the left, Veritone may continues to be a bit of a dangerous play because every time you think that it's going up, then it comes back down. But with their positive recent earnings, this price upgrade, it looks like sentiment is there for Veritone. And I also like that the CEO not too long ago purchased 300,000 shares. We hear all the time in the investing world about CEOs selling shares. How often do you hear about them buying shares? That shows a lot of sentiment. That shows a lot of confidence in the product of the company. Okay, let's take a look at Quantum and what Quantum is doing. So we know that IonQ has been just chopping in this channel for now the better part of three or four months. We did have, we do have this big day coming up at the end of this week. And it looks like investors want to get out in front because we can see this $40 price here. We bumped all the way up to $44, which is a big move for IonQ, although it does move like this pretty often. This does seem significant in the longer, in the bigger picture, it might look like just some normal volatility, but it could be setting up for potentially a retest of this $48. So $48 has been a very key point for IonQ and beyond $48, we have 53 or so, 55 being its all-time high on the wick touch. So what we would like to see for IonQ is we'd like to see it come up to 48 and start using 48 as support so it can fill this gap and potentially retest its all-time high. Could this happen as soon as this week? If the market backdrop stays good, and it depends on what we hear at that Friday New York Stock Exchange. So I would keep... IonQ on your radar, watch $48, set a price alert. If it breaks above $48, even Felix said he would be looking at IonQ. Felix and friends would be looking at IonQ if it breaks above 48. And this might be, the stars might be aligning, but you could say that on the last number of runs and it's come back down. So just keep that in mind. This is a volatile stock. All right, so LAES, so we just talked about LAES and CLSQ. It looks like it's holding in the post market. They did have about a 6% day, but tr to be honest, the stock has been struggling a lot. It was posting higher highs for a little while through July, and then it just entered this brutal downtrend and it really hasn't been able to escape the downtrend. It has come and found some base of support here around $2.50, and it's kind of been rolling sideways a little bit. Maybe with the investor call tomorrow with Carlos, and maybe with this earnings outlook, sentiment can start to shift positive. So let's hope if you're in CLSQ that we get some positive price action. All right, and looking at the year to date for D-Wave, of course, D-Wave has held above $15 for the better part of the second half of this year now. And D-Wave had a nice little day today. It has been very choppy and volatile like a lot of quantum stocks, but it is moving towards the upper end of this range between $15 and 1630. We want to see D-Wave break above 
1630 and start using it as support as it has here and many times in the past. So 1630 is a figure to keep on watch. It did have a small reject rejection on the two hour candle on 1630 today. The next levels, of course, from there would be 17 and 1813. So we'd be looking to potentially fill this gap up. And we have posted higher highs recently on D wave. We're pretty far away from that, but let's just keep an eye on the chart and see what happens. So Rigetti has always been an explosive stock and today was no different. It had a 9% day and we can see that recently since that 36 qubit chip announcement, we had this explosion to 1750, this sell off down to below 15. We've seen Rigetti at 1386 multiple times in the last couple months, but we've also seen it touch 18 twice and we've seen it test 1750 multiple times. So we ended in an interesting area, not an area that I have marked out so much, but there is a gap to fill here up to 1751 and there is a retest of 1813. But beyond that, really all Rigetti has left is to prove that it can move from 18 to 2156, break that all time high from December, 2024, and then it would enter price discovery. So my what I maintain with Rigetti is there are only so many shares of this company to go around. And as they continue releasing hardware, cementing their partnerships, they have the investors like Quanta, they have an established name and established brand, the shares are gonna get more scarce and they're gonna get more valuable, potentially as long as we keep a good market backdrop. All right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that. Today was a really exciting day. We had Veritone explode. We had quantum stocks have one of their nicest days for quite a while. And there's a lot of exciting news, like we saw the huge run for Oracle confirming the whole AI theme. Yet again, we get confirmation after confirmation, but it doesn't hurt to see that translate to dollars. Anyway, really enjoyed this one and we'll see you guys in the next one. If you would like to support the quantumbull.com and the Quantum Bull YouTube channel, I do have YouTube memberships here each of them has exclusive perks. The Gold Bull membership gets you into our Discord with trade alerts, and we have a lot of fun over there. So I invite you to come join as a channel member.